how has your view or yeah your view of poverty and homelessness changed because of your experience here um, it's become more personal because when before it's just out there but when you see it when you experience it it becomes personal it becomes something that has you've, you've seen it you can experience it and because of that I have more of a heart for it I think that if I ever have kids or if I could recommend uh, anything for anyone move the camera around a lot if I could recommend that for anyone I would say that people need to go on these trips because through these through through these experiences we can really understand what people go through what people have to deal with and we can have a better understanding and and it becomes personal that's that's the biggest thing right there is that it needs to be personal for people not just a statistic all right um this next question like how has your view of Christianity changed from when you were back at home? Like, well, what's what's made some of the biggest impacts on you from doing this this trip away from home? Um, wow. Um, one of the most simplest things, and yet so significant, is honestly the difference between God and Jesus. Before I, my relationship with God became more personal, God and Jesus were want more of like one person. I mean, they are. They, Jesus is God and God is Jesus. But I began to realize, you know, the difference of the Trinity is, and, the, and the difference between God and Jesus. And um, just one of the biggest things I've grown is, is my love specifically for Jesus. And realizing who Jesus really is apart from God, you know, um, who he is aside from God, he's, he is, um, the son of God, and, and what he did, and who he is, and what he did for the world, and, um, uh, I've just, I've just deeply grown this love for Jesus, and, and I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned right there, is just who Jesus is, what he did, and, and why other people need to know about him. Okay, so how has your um, perspective on ministry changed? Like, what what have you learned about dealing with people and, and how God wants to interact with people and how he wants you to interact with people? How has that changed? Um, really what it, what it is about, uh, it's not about numbers, it's, it's more about relationships and, and impacts. It doesn't matter about the size of a youth group. It doesn't matter about anything like that. But really, the relationship you have with the people you're ministering to, and uh, that's what ministry is really about. You know, God goes out of His way among the entire world to have a relationship with us, and so we should do the same by having a relationship one-on-one -on -one with the people we meet, with the people we we work with, with the people we try to evangelize to. And so I think that's really what ministry is. Relationships. You know, taking someone out to eat, to talking to them when they have a problem. Or when you see someone homeless along the street, instead of just uh, giving them a, a few dollars, use that few dollars to, to get them some shoes or something. It's all about relationships and conversations. So, what about um, your view on like personal disciplines and your own spiritual growth and uh, what it's what it takes to be a follower of Jesus? How how has that changed? Um, it definitely involves a lot of self motivation, which I do struggle with. I do think I've grown in that. Um, with my own personal motivation, but um, it, it does require a lot of that. It requires a lot of self-motivation and, and taking time out of your life, out of your days, to, for, to, uh, to spend time with God, and that's extremely necessary. Things like 
prayer, things like time with God, reading and writing, all these things are necessary for a relationship with God. And it's, it's it can be so hard to commit sometimes, but it really is a need, need to be thing in your relationship with Jesus because if you're not communicating with Jesus, how is that even a relationship? If you're not talking with your friends, that's not much of a relationship. You're just, you're here and they're there. And it, there's nothing between that. There's nothing special about that. And so the biggest thing I've learned is that prayer is important, time with God is important. And if you're going to minister, if you're going to call yourself a follower of Christ, then you're going to need to give up things and, and you're going to need to spend time with the person you're trusting. And another thing is just that you can so easily say, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. But to be a follower, you have to follow. In the Bible, when when Jesus called his disciples, he called him, he called he called them to drop, you know, what they were doing in their lives behind them to follow. Them. They had to leave their lives. They had to commit. And so it's in a way it's frustrating to me when people say they commit, but they don't really commit. So it's all about commitment. It's all about time. And, and you know, in the end, it prospers. It's not a hassle. It's not, oh, I have to sit down and, and do this. It's it's a enjoyable experience because you get to spend time, learn more about your commander, your commander Jesus. Hey, there's no doubt that um, traveling and being in ministry is a challenge and difficult at times. What what were some of the harder times for you uh, over the last seven months of doing this kind of journey? Traveling? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's, it's an interesting experience having to, you know, first of all, my dresser is a, is a bag, and, uh, I'm constantly having to keep track of all my stuff, and, you know, keeping it in one place, and then, you know, unpacking and repacking, you know, over and over, so that process is, can be kind of stressful. I've, I've had moments where... It's been very um, upsetting, I suppose, that I ha I don't have, I I've realized, you know, how much it means to have a bedroom, to have a bed, to have all these things. When you're traveling, you don't really have those things, so it's it's really nice to, to have those things. So I'd say that's some of the hardships of, of traveling and ministering, but I mean, that's, that's ministry. Um, then there's, you know, missing home, there's, there's, um missing your friends and stuff, but of course there's also the reward of, of meeting new people, hearing other stories, and uh, even sharing your own stories. Um, uh, other sacrifices, I suppose, would be, um, you know, along with ministry comes uh, fasting and commitments and, and trying to commit yourself to not really con concern your, be concerned so much of yourself but as to others, so you have to make a conscious effort of that. And so, uh, there are sacrifices made, but it really is worth it. So, the experience has been awesome because of the sacrifices I've made. How has your view of yourself changed? What what have you learned about yourself or discovered maybe that you didn't know or, or something that became uh, more empowering to you about yourself or about your future? I have always had a passion and a love for others, but it never really sort of set in. You know, as a growing up, I was thought, you know, I would probably enjoy being like a motivational speaker or anything like that. You know, that would be kind of cool, just because, or even like a therapist or whatever, I don't know, just because of my love for people, and I've always had, you know, that care for people. But it never really came out, you know, for, for a while. What I really settled on, I mean, I went from filming to acting and all that different stuff, but what I really settled in on and I was set for it was, was voice acting, and to, and I still love it. I love to voice act, and I would love to do that, but, but through this internship, my love for people has just exploded, you know, it's just like overflowed out of me, and uh, without a doubt, 
I've learned so much about myself of, of what I want, who I am. Um, I am, I am meant, I am meant to be, and I also desire to be, a hope and love to a broken world. I've realized that for myself. I, I want to show people that the world isn't as dark as it seems. And, um, I've also realized that for myself. While in the process of, of learning how to teach others that, I've learned that for myself. You know, that I have to stay positive. I have to stay um, confident. And I can't give up, no matter what hardships come come upon me. Uh, if it takes, you know, giving it all, I have to be willing to do that. And so, I've really developed a, a war-like attitude towards missions in life. Missions of giving hope and ministering. And so I try to teach that to others. And so that's what I've mostly learned about myself is just that I am a warrior. And I have to treat life as a warrior. When temptations come, when when hardships come, when people I, I am somewhat confused about how to handle, when situations like that come, I have to approach it like a warrior. I have to be a warrior. And I think through this internship, I've, I've done that. I've become a warrior. Of course, there's always times to, to grow more of a warrior, but I've really grown into my, uh, I suppose you could say I've put on my armor through this, through this internship. What do you think will be the most difficult challenge for you now that things have kind of come to an end here? What's, what's going to be a challenge for you in the next phase? Um, to be honest, uh, and I mentioned this, it's it's gonna be self motivation. Um, I, I struggle with that, <laughs> but um, I'm definitely much more motivated than I was before. When I get home, um, I'm gonna try to work really hard on that. I mean, uh, I'm gonna spend this next week getting my head in gear to say, okay, this is what I have to do. When I get home, I need. I, I, I don't want to be waking up at one o'clock in, in the afternoon like every other day before this internship. I want to be able to get up. I want to be able to do devotions. I want to be able to have a constant um, keep uh, mindset of keeping my ground when any temptation kind of comes, and so and also keeping up with my blog, keeping up with all of these uh, uh, these things that I've learned. So my answer is just is self-motivation. I'm just going to have to work on that. And, and hopefully uh, God will give me that strength. Uh, also, I pray that God would um, give me people in my life that would walk beside me to help motivate me. Because I think that always helps when others are there to help motivate you. What have been some of the highlights from your time over these last seven months? What are... When you think about just some of the best times that you've had, what what are the first few thoughts that jump into your mind? Well, first of all, the, the first things that immediately jumps into my mind are the insane scenarios I've been a part of with George that just, man, like, <laughs> when people come home, so what's your experience have? I got the stories for you. You know, just... Uh, it's been a riot, to be honest, just the experiences. So that's one of the things that jumped in my head, but, um, to say that's the only thing, of course, that's not, I mean, uh, but that is one of the, one of the things that jumped into my head, because, oh, man, just the things I can laugh about through this. But aside from that, um, things that really jump out are, uh, getting to speak all the more puts puts in my heart, puts in my head that this is my future. I am meant to have a mic in the hand, and it's the it's the thrill of being up there. The it's it's almost similar to a thrill of of riding a roller coaster, you know, just the the thrill of being up there, engaging with an audience, and seeing how they react, and and even being to being able to see positive feedback. That that means so much to me, just, it, uh, 
it not only builds me and, and myself, and, uh, but it also helps me. By the end of the day, it, it, it feels good to know that that God is is working in hearts, God, th through me. It feels good to know that God is working through me, and that I can work with God to to give hope to others. So that's one of the biggest highlights right there is just speaking and getting to tell my story and people listening and, and being willing to listen. And uh, another highlight I'll say is that um, getting to see things I've never really gotten to see. You know, simple things like seeing uh, homeless people, or which we've gotten to do a few times, getting to go to rallies or conventions where um, we've got to hear stories of, of hardships and it's become more personal. Those are the highlights right there. So that's what I think comes to mind. How has your view of church changed? Um, if I may say, uh, I don't want to, I have to be careful with how I put this, but I have seen, and not, not as much seen, but uh, I've gotten to hear a lot about how, how church works, and uh, unfortunately a little bit of church politics, and I have to be careful how I put that, because I don't want to, I have to just obviously be careful with that, uh, but I have, I have seen and heard of some church politics, and so... Um, Church for me is, uh, it has a lot of potential to, to, to reach a lot of people, but you have to be careful, I think, with that church. Um, church can, can be a place where people can be turned away, but it also, I've also seen how church can be all the more beautiful through this internship. I've seen, you know, wow church is awesome. So I've seen a lot of positives and negatives of it. Uh, worship at a lot of churches I've been to have been very exciting, very uh, intense. So that's huge right there. Just to sort of see, wow, worship is meant to be, honestly, it's meant to be a party. You know, a party with the right uh, you know, don't let a party get you pulled away from the, the message of the party, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, worship is meant to be fun. It's meant to be worship. It's meant to be a celebration. And uh, that's one thing I think that needs to be in churches. Is uh, I know it, it, it's all, it depends on your uh, preference of what you prefer. If you prefer hymn books or... Uh, more intense with guitars and drums and stuff, but uh, fr from my perspective, I think worship should be out of the hymn books and just into the to to, to uh, just really fun worship. That's just me. It, it really depends on the person. Another thing I've learned from church is uh, that um, it's important to take notes on the messages. I think. Also on church, you gotta be real when it comes to church. It's so easy, whether you're in, whether you're working with the church or, or you're just go attending a church, there needs to be a presence of, of realism there. It, people have got to be real. It needs to be a place where you can come broken and leave motivated. It can't be a place where things are covered up. It can't be a, things where, a, a place where things are hidden. So I think that's my perspective of church. How have you learned about faith and trusting God during this time? Faith and trusting God. Um, you know, you hear stories of, uh, like, we were just, we just finished a, watching a, a movie and this person was asked, you know, are you a Christian? 
are you a follower of Christ? And his reply was, well, I used to, but I've kind of strayed from that. I don't, I don't really believe that anymore because of my, uh, I think it was her, his mother who, who died of, I think, cancer. And he just sort of said that. And uh, that's just an example of what, it, what faith means. It's easy to follow God when, when you're, when things are great. But as soon as things go bad, that's where your faith is truly tested. And I remember talking to one of my friends who was wanting to commit to Christ. He was like, oh, I'm up for this. But then the hardships came. And I was, I was talking to him and I said, well, what did you think you signed up for? This is an army you've signed up for. You know, fo following Christ is an army. You're in an army. And there's, this is war. And that's why you have to develop that warlike attitude. And so when it comes to faith, when temptation comes, when troubles come, what's helped me with my faith, with my trust, is, is developing a warlike attitude. When temptation comes, I, I sort of think of myself as a, as a warrior. Even a prisoner of... Uh, and, and you know the the people are trying to interrogate me. You know, tell us this, give us this, and then you have to say no. I'm standing strong. I'm not gonna give in. You know, you see in those those, those Hollywood movies where the person is you know give in. And he's like, no, I will not give in. He says really intensely. That's how we have to handle our faith in Christ. We have to be brutal. We have to be we have to be firm. We have to be intense and say no I'm gonna trust God I'm gonna when when personally when I when I look at my faith with that warlike attitude it makes me you know draw my sword and say all right let's do this I'm not gonna fall and when these hardships come when things don't turn out the way I expect which has happened I have to say you know what this is war and I am committed and I'm going to follow. And it's going to take a lot more to bring me bring me down. And I'm going to trust God. I'm going to put my faith in God. And that's what faith is. Oh my goodness.